Hey friends, I'm Heidi with Heavenly Minded Home. I have been vlogging here for over five years and today I'm gonna to share with you guys exactly how I would recommend to a friend to start their own YouTube channel. So vlogging, homeschool channel, whatever you're thinking of possibly doing, these are my tips of how to get started today. I pray you're having a great week. We have videos coming out every single day. Yes, literally every single day. And this week we're talking all about vlogging. So this is something I get questioned about often, like, how do you start a vlog? I thought about doing this. Like, I don't know how to make it work or whatever. And so from a little nobody in YouTube land, mom doing homeschooly, homemakery things, I figured I would share with you all the tips and advice that I send out when people ask me this question. So I shared in yesterday's video why I started doing this whatsoever. You guys can check that out right up here. Or of course, when you subscribe and you tap that little bell notification, you'll get these videos that come out every day and then you'll just see all of this stuff. But this is, how I would start. I made some notes. <laughs> I sat down here so we can kind of just steamroll through all of this. Um, of course, if you guys, if we run across anything, you have any questions, leave me a comment down below. If you guys know somebody who's been kind of thinking about wanting to step into the like family vlog, homeschool, YouTube land, be sure to send them this video. And I pray that it can be a blessing because YouTube can be great for many different things, but having a community of like-minded believers, a fellow homeschool moms for tips and tricks and encouragement and all of that is a wonderful resource to have. So let's get started and talk about how on earth does one start a vlog? Ready? You're thinking about YouTube, you're wanting to start a channel. I think first and foremost, you really need to define why it is that you're doing this before you just jump in, you know, kind of stop and think about it, take it to prayer, really search yourself and say, okay, why are we doing this? Now, I firmly believe that every single person has something that they are really gifted at that they could help someone else learn. And um, I think kind of figuring out what that is that you just are knowledgeable about or you're, you're experienced in or you're a great encourager at, you know, what is that gift that you have that you could really help someone with? Now we know YouTube has something for everyone on here. I mean, there is something for every single topic you could possibly imagine in YouTube land. And so it doesn't have to be homeschool stuff. It doesn't have to be homemaker stuff. You know, it can be whatever it is that you really feel passionate about and the reason why you're here watching this and you're thinking of, you know, wanting to start a YouTube channel. But I think really pausing first to define like, why are you doing this? What is your purpose? Now, I don't think that that necessarily means that that has to be your purpose throughout your entire YouTube journey. I know for me, it has changed throughout the seasons of my life, but understanding why you're doing this, why this is important, right? Are you just trying to build up an income, right? Maybe, you know, I've met with families. They say, oh my gosh, we're, we want my husband to be able to work from home. Like we're gonna use this as a mode to build up, you know, like you're going for it for the money, right? And that's what you're working towards. Well, it's a difficult road. So if that's the road you're looking for and you're just trying to make some money, it can be done, but just know it's not as easy as one may think. And we'll get to that this week in these videos and I'll share with you how much we've made. But, um, you know, kind of understanding why you're doing this is going to be a key in kind of setting together all of the next steps because that's your motivation, that's your reasoning, that's your focus, that's your purpose. I know I watched our first vlog. You guys can watch my reaction to it right up here. And when I was done, I was like, what was my purpose in that? Like, what was I going for? I had no idea. Okay. So that's why I'm, this is what I've learned from our journey here. I had no idea. I was just making stuff out. I think I figured it out after a little while, but it is kind of funny to watch some of those early vlogs. I'm like, what is the purpose of this? Like, yay, I just did it. Like, you know, you, you learn from doing and that's great, but it was funny kind of watching back. And I'm like, what direction am I going in? past self. I had no idea what direction I was going in. So I would say first and foremost, let's kind of pause and let's define why you want to be doing this. And if you want to share your why, you can leave me a comment down below, but um, definitely you want to figure that part out first would, would be a good tip. So once you've kind of figured out that, of course, the first like real step you need to do is actually set up 
your YouTube channel, right? You've got to go if you are using your account that you watch YouTube in, if you're going to set up a second account, I would really recommend setting up a Gmail account for whatever your channel is going to be. Um, I find it easier to kind of have some separation in that. So um, like for me, I have my personal email, but then I have Heavenly Minded Home and I set up Heavenly Minded Home, right? For me, it's actually changed. When we started, we were the minimalist homeschool. So I had the email, the minimalist homeschool. I had social media tags, the minimalist homeschool. I had YouTube, the minimalist homeschool. We have since changed to Heavenly Minded Homeschool. So then I had social media and email that was Heavenly Minded Homeschool. And we are now just simplified Heavenly Minded Home. So I have email, social media, YouTube, Heavenly Minded Home. So it can change if you need it to change. I honestly just have my old inboxes forwarded to my new one. So it's really easy. But um, think about you know what you wanna do. I would set up a Gmail account for that specific thing and then come over to YouTube, sign up, set up an account, click to start a channel. If you need help doing that, you guys can totally Google it if you can't figure it out. Um, but step one, set it up. You're gonna have YouTube. If you wanna get into social media, are you gonna do Instagram? Are you gonna have a Facebook? Are you gonna make a Facebook group or Twitter or whatever it is that you're doing? Um, I personally used to have all of those things I couldn't keep up with it and it felt so overwhelming trying to make sure I was active in Instagram and posting stories, but I'm vlogging and I'm doing this and I'm doing that and I'm doing this. I honestly last year said, I'm done. I'm not going to put, like maybe one day that season will come where I want to be a little more involved again on Instagram or Facebook or something. I don't keep up with it like personally, so professionally trying to do it, it just, it was too much. I'm gonna keep my focus here on YouTube. Um, I just, for me, that's where I ended up falling on all of it, but you do with it what you will. I'm glad I was really active on Instagram for so many years because um, that really, that's where I've met so many of you was through Instagram. Um, I had a Facebook group that really grew. You know, that used to be really active and I feel so bad. Like I'm glad it's there as a resource for the people who use it. It's just not something that like, I can keep up on all the stuff. So it's also okay to be like, I'm gonna do YouTube and only YouTube. I can't keep up with all the other things. That's okay. But step one, you gotta figure out what you're doing and you gotta set up the account so that you can start doing the rest of the steps. So let's talk about equipment a little bit. Okay, you're setting stuff up, you're ready, you wanna start putting stuff together. How the heck are you gonna record and do all of this stuff, right? That would be step number one. Um, let's talk about a camera. I started off with my cell phone and it's so funny watching old footage because I'm like, oh my gosh, like now looking back, I'm like, it looks awful, but, but it was what I had. And so the camera that you currently have is the best camera for you to use to get started because it's what you have. I know I felt so often like, oh man, I've got to save up. I, I would look into cameras and see what these people were using and watch reviews and stuff. And then I'm like, holy cow, I don't have that kind of money to drop on a fancy camera. Like, that's awesome. That's great. I don't have that. And then I cannot tell you how many times I have researched like budget vlogging cameras and budget GoPros and stuff like that. I've saved up, I've purchased them and they were garbage. Like I have not found one budget camera that I was like, yes, I'm so glad I got this. Honestly, I haven't. Maybe there's some out there that's great, but I could never find any. They were all hot garbage. You know what I found worked the best? My cell phone. My cell phone was what I had. And so that's what I would use. Um, over the past five years, anytime that I have needed to get a different phone, I have gone in and literally been like, what is the best camera that I can afford? That's what I'm going for. What shoots the best video footage? Like I want decent pictures, but I really want video quality. Like that's what I'm going for here. And then I would research with that phone. Um, I had the Google Pixel, love the Google Pixel. I wish I, I was in between um, getting the newer one or switching to an iPhone, which I will talk about. Um, the Google Pixel was pretty good. I did enjoy this. It took some really great footage. Um, one time I really wanted a camera that I could have as like a backup camera. And so I just purchased an old iPhone and used this. I put a really nice, you know, case on it and used this for footage um, because it was cheaper to buy an old iPhone than it was to buy like a fancy camera. So I just spent like 100, 120 bucks, bought an old refurbished iPhone and this thing was fantastic for um, coverage. And then, um, 
this is one of the old pixels and so it was not getting updates anymore and starting to cause me issues and um, I was able um, to kind of get an investment into our company here at the end of last year and so I did upgrade to the new iPhone of all the phones there are some with great coverage you know great ability so don't think that you have to have this switching to an iPhone you get the best video <laughs> like iPhone just gives the best it really really does Google Pixel I feel like was great I know there's some good stuff from Samsung like there are some good phones so whatever phone you have you can make it work I promise you like don't let that hold you back but if you are looking to get something um, either switching making your main phone an iPhone or just getting an older you know refurbished one to use as just a dedicated filming phone um, I found best quality it comes from iPhone hands down so um, the best camera to use is the one that you have don't think you have to have a fancy camera um, even the budget ones I found that cameras on cell phones are just so much better here today the other thing is microphones I don't use microphones I've bought microphones before I've been sponsored by microphones before that I've attached into my phone and stuff I have found that the audio that I get from just my standard cell phone, even not even iPhone, like using my Google Pixel, using Motorola's that I had, using different things, I have found that to be more than sufficient. I just use what already comes in my phone. I use a standard app. I don't go through like additional things that I've built in standard, whatever you have. Honestly, that works great. Um, a couple things that I will, you know, I really do recommend is getting some sort of tripod. Um, you can get the tripod like you see here. I actually just ordered myself um, one of the actual like Gorilla Bindi ones. I had one of those forever ago and it broke. I had just like a knockoff brand. And so um, I had a gift card and I really need a better one. I love my tripod that I have. It even has um, a remote that I can use with it. Um, the other thing is I did get the Apple Watch because this has a camera remote in it, which I am obsessed with because I can start, stop, see a preview, everything right on my watch. And so that does sync really well. I really do like that. Um, but having some sort of tripod, something to put it on, I promise you is going to be really helpful. You can get them super duper cheap off of Amazon now, um, but having something to hold on to it. As far as lighting and things like that go, the best light that you can use is a fresh light out of a window, okay? So I always sit in front of a window with the, like, the light hitting me when I record. Um, so if you don't have a space like that, you want to get a ring light or something like that, you totally can. I just think natural light gives you a better image than a natural light. So do I have a ring light? Yes. Do I use a ring light? Sometimes. I'm glad for it in that circumstance. Um, my husband's office that we stream church services and, and different things for is in the basement. There is no natural light. We have to rely on ring lights and lamps and stuff like that down there. But as far as everything I do, I just try to make sure that I'm sitting by a window and that is so much easier than messing with lights. So honestly, just having like whatever you are you know recording on and then being in front of a light having a, a tripod of some sort is going to be really super helpful and then the last thing i want you to kind of think about here to kind of actually get into the the equipment part of it is where are you going to be recording is this kind of just like day in the life all the time so it's kind of just wherever you are you'll kind of record in that space or is it, you know, something like this, we're going to have a talking head, you're going to be sitting down and talking. Um, if you, you know, any of these families, you know, that you think of, I'm thinking of like Simply Living It, Angela Brana, if you know, you think of any of these guys, um, Farmhouse on Boone, you know, any of these, you usually see them filming in certain spaces from the same angles and the same setup, right? You kind of stop and think about where am I going to film? right is what is going to be behind me what's my backdrop here right like i film in my room a lot because it's quieter in here i've got six other people living in my house so it's kind of quieter in here i can control my environment a little bit i've got a window here with great light i've got a pretty basic backdrop so you're not just like distracted by all kinds of stuff going on stop and think about you know okay you've got the equipment you've got the camera you've got the tripod you've got some good light 
what's your setting going to be? You're gonna wanna kind of think about that a little bit. And if that means you need to kind of like dedicate, maybe you wanna do a lot of, you know, talking and showing. I think of, you know, my friend over at Waldock Way and, you know, she kind of has the same setup for where she sits down and she shows you the different things and she does the stuff. So kind of stop and pause and think about that. You know, where is the space, you know, where's gonna be kind of your dedicated recording space um, and, and how best should you set that up using these tools to give you, you know, that, that right setup for some good footage. So equipment wise, you know, resources needed, that's what I would recommend, you know, for that is to kind of have your phone, whatever camera you have is good, get yourself some sort of tripod, make sure you've got some good light and then figure out what space you're going to use for recording. So that's like physical needs you're going to need to start recording and start doing stuff but then you have the whole kind of techie side of it of the editing the taking all of these clips and footages from you know your cell phone to being on something that can be posted to youtube now i used like this whole past five years of doing this i used video pad it's a um it, you can just download it um, I, i'll link it down below it's free um, I think it's like free for a trial, but if you actually go to YouTube and search video pad code, there's codes that you can get. So that way, you know, you can continue to access it. Video pad is just what I used. It's what I got used to. It's what I knew. So I just stuck with it. I had tried a couple of different things. A lot of things are like free, but then they put watermarks or they're free, but then they kind of cap you at how high of a resolution you can export it to. Um, I really like exporting my stuff to 4k footage. Um, HD is like 1080, but I really like upping that just so I noticed that I would do stuff and it would look okay on my phone, but then we'd pull up a video on our TV and I was like, oh, it looks awful on the TV. It just, the, the frame rate and stuff wasn't there. And so um, I liked with VideoPad, I could export to 4K. Um, and so even if I couldn't shoot in 4K footage, exporting it to 4K kind of helped a little bit. Um, again, just trying to utilize the tools that I had to get the best resolution. Um, but again, this is one of those things where you're not gonna learn all the ins and outs of editing software right now before you get started. You're going to learn as you get using it and you get, you know, just doing this and starting to know these different things. And so whatever editor you can get right now, that's fantastic, right? Just like the camera, the one you have is the best one to use. The one that you can get, you can watch some tutorials, you can get in and start playing with and clicking around and figuring out, that's the best one because you're going to learn how to edit. You're going to grow in all of that. And um, like for me now, um, I actually use iMovie, which was just free on, like I said, we were able to invest in our, you know, kind of ministry here on YouTube. And so getting the iPhone and an iBook or iMac, whatever it's called, MacBook, there it is. See, I'm totally new to Apple. Getting a MacBook um, was helpful. So I have iMovie now, which was just free on there. I did not upgrade and get, you know, the, the purchase version. It's simple, it's direct. Um, I'm not one who spends a lot of time in my editing. Like, I mean, I have to put it together and all of that, but as far as like super cinematic, whatever, that's not what you're gonna get here. Um, so what one you can get, what one you can learn, what one you can start to use is gonna be the best. Free and basic is totally doable because remember, if your content is great, it doesn't matter if your video isn't shot from a really expensive camera. It doesn't matter that your video isn't like super heavily edited and all this other stuff. What's the content? What's the heart? And that's why I said, define why you're doing this. If your reason for doing this is to have like super cinematic movie-like edits, then this whole video, um, you're wasting your time. I'm sorry you've lost these past, you know, 10 minutes or whatever, because that's not what we're going for here. Um, but get what you can, learn it to the best of your knowledge. If you change and upgrade later, like that's great. Like I said, I did video pad all these years and it was fine. It, it's, you know, I, I'm not here to be the best edited video on the internet. Um, I'm here with a message and a purpose and um, help for other homemakers and homeschool moms and just families that want to live to glorify God. Like that's my purpose and my focus here. And so I feel like that's what my message is. And maybe the video footage wasn't always the best. Maybe the edits aren't always the greatest. Maybe stuff's kind of shaky and blurry, right? Like it may not be the best, but the message is, and that's what matters. So you, you need these tools and resources, right? You need a camera, you need something to edit it with, but 
it doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be top notch. You can make it work. The only thing here in equipment as far as editing that I would recommend is depending on what your setup currently is, you might need an external hard drive, a lot of video footage. It's a lot <laughs> and it takes up a lot of space, especially if you are shooting in high, I shoot in the highest quality I can. Um, so having an external hard drive, like I said, I'll link some stuff down below that I use if you guys wanna check it all out, but um, having an external hard drive, extra SD cards, things like that can be super beneficial. Again, just dependent upon what your setup, you know, looks like, be it, you know, computer, laptop, cell phone, whatever it is that you are working with. So that's, that's equipment as far as the physical making it happen and then all the editing stuff you got to figure out as well. Let's, let's talk about how to get this going. So you've got the equipment, you have the software, like you, you have the physical means to make this happen. Next, I would recommend a plan. <laughs> you got to work on this step. And so stopping to think about, you know, we kind of have our, our focus. Okay. This is why I'm doing this. I want to encourage other homeschool moms. I think that, you know, my family has a unique setup. We're dealing with this with our kids. You know, maybe you have a child with special needs and you're really passionate about helping other people with, you know, children. Maybe you homestead and that's your thing. You know, what, what are the thing, like, what are the reasons? What's that umbrella of like why you're doing what you're doing? But now what are you recording? Like, what are you doing here? And it doesn't have to just be one thing, right? If, if you watch our channel, we got days in the life, we've got tutorials. I mean, we kind of got everything. We got some stuff that's kind of just, I don't know what the heck it is, right? But that's what I noticed in watching like our first vlog. I'm like, what, what exactly am I recording here? I had no idea. I was just jumping out there and trying to figure it out and get started. And that's fine. Sometimes you just got to jump and make it happen. But pause and think a little bit about what are you recording? what are you doing here? Because you have to remember that people are going, especially in the beginning, nobody knows you. You're totally new to YouTube land. People are going to be searching for something and somehow your video is going to come up. So is there something, what are you offering, right? You think in that mindset of your consumer, what are they going for and looking for and how are you going to fill that gap? Um, sometimes you don't really know. And then after going for a while, you kind of figure out that, oh, wow, I guess there's a gap here that I'm filling, right? I kind of was that way with minimalist homeschool. I was just sharing what we were doing, hoping that it could help other people because we keep things very simple. And I wasn't really seeing simplicity in a lot of the homeschool world. And so I started to notice that once I got going, wow, there is like a huge gap here that I could fill, right? That, that I can be a piece, you know, that's here filling. And so stopping to kind of figure out what are you recording? What are you doing here? And then think about when, when are you recording this? For me, I told you, right? I use natural light. So right then and there, I'm like, okay, I have to have good light to record because I'm not gonna set up a bunch of artificial lighting. So I need to make sure that I've got some light coming through the window, you know, so y'all can see me. So this can work out. I think about, you know, our kids days. Am I filming a day in the life? So am I filming as we're doing homeschool, as I'm cooking, as I'm running errands, as I'm doing whatever, or am I doing something like this where I need some dedicated time to sit down in a quiet space and talk a whole bunch. Um, I used to do this. We started the vlog um, right before I had our fourth child. And so her nap time used to be recording time. Like for those of you who remember, especially like our early biblical womanhood and stuff like that, as soon as she went down to sleep, it was like, boom, 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 boom. You know, like I got everything recorded because that was my timing. You have to stop and kind of think about that a little bit with your family, with what you have going on. Or is this something you and your husband are doing together? You're doing by yourself. All the kids are involved, whatever. You've got to kind of stop and think about that. What the heck am I actually recording? And when are we going to make all of this happen? You've got to plan that. And then you want to make sure that this part, the recording and doing this is just a piece of the puzzle because then you have to make sure that you've got time. You've got dedicated time to actually edit this together. It might take you a while at first. Um, I am very efficient in my editing because I don't get super fancy. So I now can edit pretty stinking quick because I'll share some tips of, of how I do that this week, but you got to have time for that. You've got to be able to edit it. Once you edit it, you have to be able to export it out of your editing program. Once you have the exported file, you have to go then and upload it to YouTube. That can take hours and then YouTube has to process it, which can take an additional set of hours. Like there's a whole process that has to happen to go from this to what you guys are currently watching on YouTube. And so that's why for me, I kind of plan out what I'm going to do 
even if the plan is just do whatever you're doing that day, I still have to plan it out and then I have to work ahead because if I want this video to come out tomorrow morning, I have all these steps that I have to do to get a finalized video that's published at that time. So you just have to kind of think about that a little bit. If you wanna do something thinking Passover, if I wanna do something for Passover, I can't just wake up on Passover and be like, oh, here. I have to work backwards to get everything lined up. Um, so just some thoughts there. You know, you have to make sure that you've got designated space to actually make the stuff come together to be something. It's not just this part of it. And then you have to think about your scheduling of posting the video. So what I do is I upload my stuff in the evening and schedule it to post like the next day, or maybe I'm doing getting something done a few days in advance, but I always schedule it to go the next day. Um, I have looked in my stats, which after you've been doing it for a while, you can get into your analytics and you can see the times that most of the people are, are, are normally on your channel, right? So you, YouTube, the algorithm, it's a whole other video we can get into, but the algorithm basically promotes those who are getting interest shortly after they've posted. So if I'm posting something at 11 o'clock at night, because that's when it gets done processing, but most people are on my channel watching stuff at like nine o'clock in the morning. People aren't going to be watching it a lot at 11 o'clock at night. It's late. I, I don't get views at that time. So if it just sits there with really no views, the algorithm basically isn't going to reward that and start putting it in front of more people because they're gonna be like, ah, clearly nobody wants to watch that. But if I look at it and I say, okay, most people are on my channel watching stuff at, for me, it's 8 a.m. I noticed that 8 a.m., like eight to nine was one of my hottest windows. So I started putting my videos out, scheduling them to post at 8 a.m. That's why if you guys notice, like my stuff comes out at the same time every day. I am not awake at, well, I'm just waking up usually by 8 a.m. I am certainly not watching YouTube at eight o'clock in the morning. It's been time change lately. So to be honest, I've been struggling a little bit with getting up at eight, but I look at when is the best time? When should I be posting this? And I schedule stuff up to post in those windows. Sometimes stuff happens and so I finish something, I just throw it out right then and there. That happens too, but you can kind of stop and think about, okay, I need time, what am I recording? When am I doing it? I need time to process it. And then let's go ahead and schedule it for an optimal time to get it out there. That's kind of some of that planning stuff we wanna start doing, but before we, we hit record and get going here. All right, we have defined ourselves, we have our equipment, we have our editing software, we've laid out a plan. Now we are going to grab that camera get ready and hit record. I guess one thing, always make sure you're horizontal. <laughs> I see that sometimes people vlogging with their phone vertical and I'm like, no, no, no. If you're doing YouTube, you don't want that. You always want to be horizontal. Just a little tip there. But these are some tips that I have and I'll share more throughout this week of easily, you guys, I'm so simple and laid back in everything easily getting started actually vlogging or if you're not like vlogging your days you're just you know kind of doing stuff like this how do you get started i always record in order so some people will you know kind of record their main stuff like this and then they'll record a bunch of like b-roll which is just you know like the little pans and kind of filler stuff um they'll, they'll record their stuff on multiple devices you know they'll have a lot of stuff going well, I have found that that just makes editing a little bit more difficult because now I have to sit down and manually go through all the stuff and, and get it arranged in the order that I want it to. Now, sometimes I have to do that a little bit like, you know, today for this video that you're seeing, I'm recording on multiple devices so that you guys can see what it looks like and how I get the shots that I get. But I also know that when I do that, that means when it comes to editing, I'm gonna have to import stuff from two different devices. I'm gonna have to line it up. You know, you gotta kind of play with it a little bit. And so when I record, I like to record in order or closely in order of how it's gonna go in the video. So I record as I'm moving, as I'm going. I pause. If I've been doing a lot of like talking or footage of the kids, in between that, I'll get some B-roll. So that way my B-roll kind of falls where I want it to. Before I move on to the next step, 
I'll get the footage that I think I'm going to want to have. I, I'd rather have too much footage than not enough. Um, but I try to do it as I'm going. So that way when I take the footage from my phone to my computer, I can just export it straight over and it's pretty much in the chronological order that I want it in. So I have found that that's a way to you know record in order that makes your edits easy. I don't want to be spending a ton of time editing. I want it to be quick. I want to be done and move on with my life. So anything I can do to shave off a little editing time, I'm your girl. So next I would recommend when you start recording that you want to play with shots and camera level. Um, if I am just always doing everything at the same level, my whole vlog is going to look exactly the same. I don't want to do that. I want some things to be shot, you know, down low. Sometimes I, I have something obscuring the camera, you know, a piece of a plant or something is coming down and you're kind of seeing me in the background. Um, sometimes it's from my view. You're seeing what I'm seeing. Other times you have a big wide shot that's showing you the whole space. You're going to want to play with that. And I really think when it comes to recording, um, it's kind of trial and error. You really just need to get in there and you need to get working on it. Um, maybe you're really shaky, right? That's shakiness is hard, you know, so, but there's tips and tricks that you can learn, you know, always have your knees bent when you're filming, work with natural motion. You know, there's lots of things that you can do to get better video shots. And I highly recommend if you just YouTube search, you know, vlogging on smartphone, iPhone, record, you know, they even vlog any of these things. You're going to find so many different people that offer great tips. Watch those videos, take your phone or your camera, whatever you're using and start practicing them. I mean, I'll have some days where I get all kinds of shots because I'm practicing these different techniques that I just watched. When it comes time to edit, I might trash them all because I did an awful job and they did not come out well at all. But you have to kind of play with that. And if you guys go back and think, if you, those of you who've been around, if you watch my old videos, you can see the shots that I'm like, ooh, this is so cool. And so I use that shot a million different times. But you've got to kind of play with that, play with your, your views and your angles that things are coming in, again, just to give you, um, give you a good variety of stuff to work with when it comes time to edit. And again, though, practice. You got to keep practicing. If you don't this is doing a physical something. So until you start actually doing it, you're not going to refine that. So don't beat yourself up. If your first few videos, your first probably dozens of videos are not going to be that great. If we're all being honest, like anybody who does this on a regular basis, we've done it pretty much full time for five years now. Anyone's going to tell you that are their first stuff. They go back and they're like, Oh my gosh, it's not the best, but you learn, you grow, and that's fantastic. Again, focus on content, the quality and all of that will come with it, I promise you. But you're gonna have to be disciplined. The number one thing I see with people who have started a vlog or started a YouTube or whatever, is they're like, oh my gosh, like you have to discipline yourself to actually get footage out on a consistent basis. Um, we did 100 days of homeschool a few years back and that was a challenge for myself to get disciplined in like actually getting stuff out on a consistent basis. It's not natural to be filming and recording for multiple shots and multiple things. Like that's not what we normally do. You might take a lot of pictures, but it doesn't mean you're constantly recording from all angles in a vlogging style. So you've got to start to discipline yourself on getting the footage, having time to edit it, you know, putting it all together. It's, it's something you're going to have to work on, but you want to kind of get, get starting to, you know, Hey, I'm going to put a video out once a week. Okay. That means that I have to boom, 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 you know, or whatever you're doing for me. I put a video out every single day. I have a very specific schedule that I work through to get a video out every single day. It just works out. All right. So you're recording some stuff. You've got some footage now, be it, you know, you filmed a day in a life, or maybe you're just getting a video to start practicing and getting a video out. Now it's time to edit said video. I feel like this is a piece that is so overwhelming to people. Again, you don't have to be the best editor. You don't have to be the fanciest. You can watch videos and see how other people edit and learn tips and tricks. But like I said, I'm never going to be the fanciest editor in the whole wide world because that's just not where I prioritize my time. It honestly isn't. If I had a million bucks and I could hire someone to do it for me, sure, let them go at it. But don't get hung up on this, okay? I promise you it's okay. You've got to work on designing your thumbnail. Honestly, one of the best things you can do here is to go through and look at YouTube 
and pay attention to the thumbnails. Which ones make you want to click on them? Which ones you're like, oh my gosh, you know, that's just okay. There's a lot in this um, and, and I don't know, it's kind of hard because I feel like don't obsess over it because just get the footage out. Like you don't wanna just get stuck here, but then stopping to think about with your thumbnail, people are gonna see that as they're scrolling. You're trying to do something that causes someone to go, ooh, what is that, and click on it. That means it needs to be clear. It needs to be kind of simple. If you've got a bunch of little ornate detail on it, nobody's gonna see it because it's just, it's too small. You're not gonna pick it up. I recommend going to Canva. I now use Canva for everything. And you can even search YouTube thumbnails, YouTube intros, YouTube outros. They have all kinds of stuff on there. And you can see some great templates that you could then can go in and add your stuff into and get them how you want them. You can also design your own from scratch. I mean, you do with it what you want, but highly recommend using something like Canva. It's a great way to, to make um, thumbnails easily. But again, kind of scroll around and look on YouTube and be like, hey, what thumbnail? catch your attention right like when you're throwing scrolling through and you see something what what about that made you go ooh what is that was it what it said was it the image you saw you know what was it that kind of drew your attention there you're gonna need to design your thumbnails then you can look at branding. Um, you can do this through, you know, on your YouTube channel with your like channel banner and, and different things. Do you wanna go ahead and make a logo that you put as an overlay on your video so that way everybody kind of sees that brand there? When you are talking, do you mention your channel name, right? Like I usually say, hey, I'm Heidi from Heavenly Minded Home. You know this is Heavenly Minded Home. You can go to my website, you can go to my social media, you can go to all these different things and you'll see oh that's heavenly minded home i know what that is maybe you don't remember my name maybe you don't know all the things about us but you know heavenly minded home right you're starting to see these things connect you know you start seeing home home school homemaker home discipleship right all these homey things kind of come together in one cohesive brand you'll grow with this especially as you get going and doing more stuff but stop and think about do you kind of keep the same look do you kind of you know is there one focus Think about the channels that you watch on YouTube. I usually go to this channel because I know they're gonna be talking about, you know, living off the grid, homesteady stuff. I usually go to this channel because I know she's gonna be talking about biblical womanhood and femininity. I go to this channel because I know they're gonna be talking about, you know, cooking and great recipes or whatever. Like there's a brand there, there's something there and that's why I go to them and I can tell their stuff because it all kind of looks cohesive and connects. Doesn't mean it has to be perfect, but it all kind of has that look and that feel toward it that you know, hey, that's what that person offers, right? If I'm looking for that, I go to there. If I see this, I know it's theirs because I see Heavenly Minded Home, whatever, right? You, you kind of see that connection. Um, so you can kind of think there about your branding. When you edit, yes, we wanna do the best we can with our video footage. You know, as we're recording, we wanna to try to make sure our stuff isn't shaky, it's not super distracting, it's not fuzzy and blurry, right? I'm always wiping off my lens, even with my shirt, to make sure that it, I'm getting clear footage. When it comes to editing, you wanna work with your volume levels. One of the quickest ways to get people to click off of your video is it's too low, or the word, you know, the, I hate when the talking is low, but the music, like it's some type of like overlay background music is really loud, or it's just garbly and you can't hear it. Um, or maybe there's just a ton of background noise like me, cause I have kids shouting through the house right now, even though they know I'm in here doing this. You wanna look at your volume levels when it comes to your editing. So like for me and iMovie, Videopad, any of those, I usually always amplify my voices a little bit. On iMovie, I go to my reduced background noise and I make sure to turn that up so that way any background noise is kind of getting drowned out, but my voice is carrying through. If I'm playing music, I make sure if I'm talking and I want you to be able to hear my talking, I lower that music even if there is soft music playing in the background. If it's just no sound and I want the music, then I can bump that music up there. But playing with the volume levels to make sure that it's a comfortable listening experience is a big deal when it comes to getting people to actually want to watch your videos. I've seen some great videos. They look great. They look wonderful. The music is so obnoxious or so loud or just so that I'm like, I can't do this anymore. So editing time is when you want to get these volume levels under control. And then you want to look at the ease of watchability. 
when you're putting it together in the editing process, does it flow? Does it work together? Or does it kind of have my eyes jumping all over the place and it's kind of leaving me confused? Sometimes I will get some clips throughout the day and when I go to put it together, I'm like, ooh, I'm like moving this way, but then this is panning over here or it's kind of moving up and then it's shaking around. Like you kind of play with that and go, hmm, is there an ease of watchability here? Is it so slow that it's boring and people are probably gonna click off because it's literally the first five minutes of me doing something and it's like, okay, what if I speed that up a little bit or I splice it a little bit, kind of get it going so that way you're not just like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna sit here and watch your froth coffee for five minutes. That would be crazy, right? But a quick little sped up speed, or, you know, sped up clip or a little bit here, you know, you can kind of break that up. So people would actually want to sit there and watch it. You want your viewers to watch from the beginning to the end of your video. The longer videos you put out like this one, most people are probably gonna click off of it. The only people who are still here are the people who are wanting to do this and they're seriously looking for tips. You gotta think of the ease of watchability, okay? If it's taking forever, if it's jumping all over the place, your volumes are crazy, nobody's gonna watch that. You wanna pay attention to those things in the editing process. You got it edited, you've exported it, you have the file now, it is time to upload your video to YouTube, which I think is always kind of like an exciting but like nervous excitement. When you upload to YouTube, you wanna make sure that you have a clear title, okay? Sometimes a little clickbaity can, can be helpful, People wanna know what they're gonna watch. So if your title and your thumbnail doesn't match what's actually in your video, people are most likely gonna get annoyed and click off of it. You want people to stay on your video. You want people to stay on your channel as much as you possibly can get them to. So you want your title to be clear. My title tells you exactly what's happening in the video, okay? You want those to connect clear, concise. You don't wanna take up a ton of words and stuff in it. I have like on mine, you'll see like this one, you'll see what it is how to start a family vlog, okay? And then you're gonna even maybe even see a little detail like, um, you know, how to start a vlog, you know, tips for success or whatever I titled it as, I don't know. And then at the end of it, I have, you know, family vlog 365. The focus of what I want you to see, what I want you to know what this video is, is at the very beginning of that title. It's clear, concise, you know what you're getting into, okay? I even have mine like, am I, this is gonna be episode 80, whatever you know that there's, oh wow, there's more than one video. This person puts out multiple things. If I wanna go see other things, I can go look because I see they're on episode 80. So that means one through 79 have to be somewhere. Clear, concise titles. You have your description box. Put your info in there. All your links, all your things. You can't put too much information in your description because YouTube already is only gonna show the first little bit. Anybody who's actually clicking on that show more is there because they want to know more. Put all your links there, all your things that you wanna share with people. I try to make sure mine are easy to click through. I put a little emoji, I kind of break them up so you can go through. There's a lot of information in my description, but guess what? Some people are looking for something specific. Some people are new and they're kind of just browsing to kind of figure out what I'm all about. You're gonna get a lot of information in there. You can go to my website, you can find out about the co-op, you can sign up for our newsletter, you can visit our store, you can get freebies, you can get all kinds of stuff. It's all in there. Connect with me on social media, links to things I've talked about, everything is there in that description. So make sure you take advantage of that. Next, you can utilize YouTube tools like the cards and chapters and the end screens. So that's once you edit your video, or you edit your video, you upload your video, YouTube processes it, you have all kinds of options to add cards, the little things that pop up that are like, hey, go click on this. Um, chapters, that's a really great way. When you come to my videos, my amazing friend, she does all of this for me. She adds the cards and she adds the chapters. So that way you guys, when you get on here, if you wanted to just learn about how to upload a video, you could have clicked on this chapter and come straight here to where I'm talking about uploading a video. When you do chapters, that also makes your video YouTube searchable, which is an amazing tool. Chapters are great. Same thing with end screen. All of my end screens, you get a little video that you can go watch if I wanna to try to keep you here hanging out with me. You don't have to get all of these perfect right away, but there are some great resources there with these different things that you absolutely can utilize. 
Next, I would highly recommend you also fill out your tags. When you go and you first upload a video and you're filling out your information, you have an option for tags. You click the show more, you want tags in there because those are the little terms that will help the algorithm when somebody searches that, they'll go, oh, yours is tag to be, you know, how to start homeschooling, how to create a family vlog, whatever. Those are those tags that are gonna help get that video there in front of people so that you can get watches, you can get people, you know, hopefully subscribing and liking and all of that great stuff. So you wanna have tags, you can use a resource, a free resource like um, TubeBuddy, TubeMate, where they will help you kind of like, hey, this is some, you know, tags we think that would work for you look around, right? You search some stuff, do some research yourself. Tags aren't the end all be all, but you want to make sure that you've got something in there. I put as many tags as it will allow me to. You get so many characters. So I max that out and throw everything in there. Again, just trying to get your stuff going in the algorithm. And then the last point here when you upload is again, kind of think about the optimal times to schedule your stuff to go live. Um, I do eight o'clock in the morning because I found that to be the best time um, when I looked at all of my stats. Think of who you want to watch their vid your video and then think about when that person is most likely on watching videos. I'm talking to homeschool moms <laughs> nine times out of 10, right? And so they're probably up and you know doing stuff in these times. Me posting stuff late at night, my videos on the weekends never get as many views. My Sunday videos, like we're, we have a video coming out every day, my Sunday videos underperform every single person every single time. I think some of the Sunday videos are fantastic. I, I hope that they're encouraging, that people like them. I never get the same amount of views on my Sunday videos because my viewership on Sunday, they're going to church, they're not online as much, they're doing family time, right? They're doing their different stuff. Same thing with Saturday. My Saturday videos would be the second lowest, right? Like those just don't get as many. Um, so stop and think about that when you are scheduling up when to post your finished video. And then the last part to all of this, you know, quick rapid fire, how the heck do you start a vlog? Remember, we're gonna talk about this all week long and you can leave your questions down below, but you've got to market it. If you think you are going to upload a video to YouTube and all of a sudden you're just gonna get all these subscribers and everybody's gonna show up, if that happens, that's fantastic. Like high five you because that's not really how it works. YouTube is very saturated. There are a bajillion other moms out there, families out there, homeschool, whatever it is that you're doing, right? There's a bajillion other people out there doing the very same thing. The algorithm rewards those who are using its features and getting people to come and check them out. That's why I say, honestly, if you want to help another fellow, you know, a family who's YouTubing and doing stuff, like their stuff, comment, share it, involve, because that tells the person, but also YouTube that, oh wow, people are interested there. If you find a channel that has good stuff, watch their stuff, right? Just being on and watching and hanging out and being there really does help. You want to, you know, get the word out there of what you're doing, share it with friends and family, share it in, you know, message boards and Facebook groups, get on social media. If you want to be doing that, you've got to, to work on getting your stuff out there in order to start getting people coming here, right? The algorithm does so much, but you got to kind of help it along and kind of get that ball rolling. Another great thing to do are collaborations. Um, like I do the homeschool show and tell where the first Wednesday of every month, we have a video that comes out you can go over there and you can see the whole playlist and see everybody who's in there and who's doing that stuff. It's really cool. Reaching out to other YouTubers and being like, Hey, I see we both talk about the same thing. Like maybe we can, you know, work together and I'll do a collaboration. There's a lot of different fun things you can do on there. You can do giveaways, you know, you do lots of different things to kind of help start getting people to view your videos. And once you start getting people, YouTube will go, Oh, people are interested in this. They'll start showing more people. And it's a whole cycle that it's, you know, it's, it's kind of frustrating sometimes. Um, but you know, you get why it's there. You want to be doing market research. Okay. I'm not the best at this. And that's probably why we've been here for five years and are not the biggest channel in the whole wide world, because I don't do a ton of this. To be honest, I'm like, Hey, I pray the Lord will bless this. He'll put it in front of whoever he wants to put it in front of. And that's fantastic, right? I'm all for that. But it would be helpful, especially if you're trying to grow and you're trying to do things to learn a little bit about what's out there, right? Who are the other families doing stuff like you're doing, right? What, what are the other people that are answering the same questions that you're hoping to answer? Kind of who else is out here and what are the types of things that they're doing? 
for other people who are doing homemaker stuff, right? Like what is getting attention? I always thought it must be the most boring as beans thing to do to watch me clean. So I would do it a little bit, but then I'm like, ah, nobody wants to see me do that. That's gotta be boring. And then I pull it up and I'm like, oh wow, people do this a lot, right? Like I, my friend and I were just talking about Scandish Home. I love her, she's so sweet. She's literally doing the same thing every time, but she keeps it interesting. I wanna keep watching, it's pleasant, it's encouraging. It makes me like, oh man, okay, I'll go do that too. So you gotta kind of think about the market research. What are other people doing in your niche? What are people watching? What are people wanting? Um, that's a great way to start to figure out and kind of give you some direction on what you should do. And then do things like engage in comments, right? If people are leaving you comments, they're sending you messages, you're sharing your stuff, like engage in that, you know, talk to people. I'm not always able to do it immediately when they come in, but I try to make sure to sit down at least once a week and just, so sometimes some of you will get hearts and comments from me like crazy because I'm sitting down and I'm catching up on my comments. Engaging in that, growing that community is really, really important. And kind of in the marketing aspect of it, again, I cannot reiterate enough, Think like your ideal consumer. Who are the people that you're hoping and wishing are wanting to watch what you're putting out? Are you doing homeschool curriculum reviews? You're doing, you know, like Bible study stuff. You know, what is it that you're doing? Who is it that you're wanting to be there watching your stuff? Well, I need to think like that. What do they want? Well, they probably want simple and basic. They probably don't want to, if I'm talking to busy homeschool moms, they probably don't want to hear me drone on for 45 minutes. I know sometimes I do, I try to get better at that, right? They probably want shorter videos. They probably want, you know, real footage. They probably want a transparent approach, right? I think about who I'm hoping to reach and then I kind of work backwards from that and say, okay, let me give you what I think you want. And then when I see videos do really well, I see a lot of comments and likes and shares, I go, oh, cool, that must be it, right? So that's why it is so important. I mean, honestly, we say it all the time, but like, honestly, if you like, if you comment, you share, like that's a big deal because it helps to show me, okay, that is what you wanted. Like that was beneficial to you. Cool, I can do more of that. So. When it comes to marketing, there's just kind of a, a nutshell there of things to think about as far as, you know, you've made the video, that's great, you've uploaded it, fantastic. How do you get people to see it? You gotta play the game a little bit. So all of that there to be said, now that I've gone on and on, but aren't you glad you have those handy chapters down there if you need to kind of bounce around? That is the type of stuff I'm thinking when people message me and they go, quick question, how does one get started YouTubing or making a vlog? And that's why it's so hard when I try to send those emails out. And I'm like, okay, let me just all of this to you. Now I can send you this link and say, might I reference this video? Because that's where I explained it all. These are those kind of starters guideline to how to start having a YouTube channel, how to start vlogging, how to start whatever you want to call it. So like I said, all week long, we're going to continue to talk about this and continue to kind of dive into a few more of the details. I would love to hear your questions. So if there's something I said and you're like, wait, what the heck are you talking about? Leave me a comment down below. You know, I will get back to you. Otherwise, I will stop gabbing at you all today. If you haven't already and you want to subscribe, that would be awesome. And here's a video that I think you would like. And if you've learned something, you see that me referencing something that could be helpful. See, I'm trying to connect you and keep you all set up right here. So go check that out. Subscribe before you leave. I will see you all right back here tomorrow for more vlogging tips.